Well, it's hard to believe March is halfway over already. Uh, it's been a been a busy one for me these last few weeks. I haven't quite got to accomplish as many um, property projects as I would like. A lot of traveling, trade shows, and things like that. I have one more here up in uh, the Wisconsin Dells this weekend, um, and I'll I'll get to focus more on some of these projects. But I did get to sneak out today and um i'm here where i was hunting that real old buck with my recurve and figure i'd just kind of show the spot in a little more detail now that it's postseason uh figure people might might be interested in just seeing more how it sets up and uh you know as i have a little more time to walk around here i can kind of see some things that you know maybe if i target this buck this coming fall that i would do differently uh, so i'll show that spot here in a second but first i wanted to show this shed that the landowner picked up um those of you that remember a, a hunt i showed back in november where i rattled a bunch of bucks in including this deer which i think is a four-year-old but this shed as you can see has probably the biggest piece of bone I've seen attached to a shed antler. Um, it's over an inch long below the base of the antler all the way around. So it's not just one piece either. So that's a little bit concerning and I don't have a ton of experience. I've obviously seen some that have one long side attached, uh, but the full thing being this, this long and this deep likely is not a good thing you know this is a deer that obviously has a lot of potential so one i hope he's still alive and uh two be interested to see if he does make it how that changes his antler growth this year so i'd be be curious to know those of you guys that have seen it before if you've been able to track deer de year to year that have shed off similar to this um this hopefully will be a deer that's easy to keep track of and I'll be able to kind of see how he responds, like I said, if he's alive. Um, but kind of crazy. I just wanted to, to show that since it's the, the biggest chunk that I've ever seen attached to a shed. So like I said, hopefully that deer's okay and, and makes it. Uh, but I'll start by showing this spot a little more detail. This tree right here behind me is where I started hunting him with the recurve. Uh, he was feeding out in this brassica plot, but I'll, I'll go start from the beginning, kind of how I came in to this spot each night. Uh, a little bit hard to, to fully demonstrate because all this uh, CRP is burned right now, but as you can see, there is a road. This road leads all the way into this little cedar grove that I was hunting. But over here is where I think that buck was bedded. So instead of walking the road, I I took the long way around, essentially walked the opposite way all the way back around here to where I basically used that little grove of cedars as my screen. I would walk straight into it and walk along the edge. This is kind of the destination food out here that I was hunting uh, them transitioning to. But essentially, I'd come in to the back side of the cedars just like this. Once I got to this point, I would crawl through underneath these cedars to get to my tree. So I'd stay as far away from that bedding as possible. And with the terrain, my my guess was he was bedded on a high point up there. So that was a big reason I wanted to just keep myself shielded instead of walking the, the road. I think I would have been pretty visible. But going through the back end of these cedars uh, worked pretty well. And it's the same way I would come out at night. Most of the deer would be out in front and I'd crawl back through and, and cut back out to my truck. The deer spend a little bit of time in these cedars, but down at the other end where it's more open, you can see how thick it is in here. Like I said, it's hands and knees crawling for probably 20 yards to get to the tree that I primarily hunted. You can see my access here where I crawl right through. And it's pretty bulletproof as far as coming in and out like that. Uh, the only thing I don't like is, and I started to see 
evidence of it, but hunting on the ground, I think you do more residual damage, especially in a spot like this, uh, compared to like being in a tree stand. Um, and I think it's just because, you know, you're in this tight little spot and your scent doesn't flow as freely. So it just kind of lingers around here, swirls around. Um, and I think hunting over and over and over again, these deer started to pick up on me, even though they weren't spooking during the hunt, you know, coming across it later at night, or I think I just had a, a higher concentration of scent that stayed in here. Um, as opposed to if you're in a tree stand, it kind of gets, you know, blown out of there pretty quick. So I started seeing evidence of that the more I hunted this spot. But this was one that I hunted. And, you know, he, as you could see by the hunts, a lot of times he would take different trails. Um, not big differences, but 15, 20 yard differences. And so when I, I, I couldn't get him to come through this cove, he was still coming around this corner. So I did move up to a different tree, only about 10 yards further up here. You see where I was tucked in right here, basically hunting this as he came around the corner on these turnips, but um, just wasn't enough to, to force him as close as I needed to for recurve range. But overall, really like this spot. I, you know, it, it very well could have worked. I was just a little bit off a couple of times. Certainly could have killed him a bunch with the, with the compound. Um, but this cedar grove isn't very big. And the last two times I hunted here, the final night, you know, a lot of times they were using this this side the, the food was better on this side and i was blowing my wind you know obviously back this way in my face the last two hunts when i didn't see him i came out right around the corner and he was on the the downwind side of the cedar grove so that's kind of one of those things that told me i was starting to put pressure on him and you know a deer that's that's that old and very very comfortable in his surroundings um, and i'll talk about his age here in a second but you know, I think it's, they're, they're very, very keenly aware of changes. And my assumption is he moved to that downwind side based on continuing to encounter some of my scent at some point. I never once, you know, physically spooked this deer during a hunt, but it was very clear that, you know, he was starting to pick up on something. He would, you know, stand longer at the field edge and look this direction a little bit more, not quite at me, but at this general direction. And, and I had seen him walk right up next to these cedars multiple times, even in previous years. You know, I have footage of him walking up through here, you know, right next to the trees I was sitting in. And, and as he started to move around a little bit, that kind of told me I was, I was putting the pressure on, but I was pretty limited in what I could do with the recurve. It wasn't, you know, if I had a compound, I could go find one of those oak trees and and kill them that way or, you know, have that element of surprise. But being kind of stuck on the ground with the recurve in hand, you know, it was just, just trying to, to capitalize on one of those early encounters because, you know, I knew that my chances would be a lot lower as I started to put pressure on this little area. One thing with this deer's age, and I can't remember how much I talked about it during my hunts, but I believe this deer was somewhere in the ballpark of 10 years old or is, you know, I hope he made it. We haven't found his sheds or anything. Um, but some of you guys may remember uh, the big deer, big non-typical that I was hunting in 2019 was right here. And um, when I went back trying to find pictures of this deer from that year, 2019, when I was chasing the big deer, I found pictures of this, uh, this old buck that I hunted this year. And he appeared to likely be a five-year-old that year. So there's no telling exactly how old he is, but there's no doubt he's been around this spot a long time. And uh, man, it'd be so cool to, to see him make it through one more year. Uh, but you can tell just just watching him you can you can tell he's got he got some age on him so looking forward to seeing if he makes it through and what he looks like and you know he seemed pretty healthy there towards towards the end um i know he at least made it past 
the hunting season. Uh, this food that he was in, these, this brassica blend, you know, the deer obviously hammered this, um, but this will all be in the multi-year blend this year. So it'll be really good clover and chicory all the way through this leading out to the destination plot. So it'll be another really killer setup and, you know, possibly I'll be a little more prepared to, to maybe even, you know, see what deer show back up and everything, but maybe even get on this deer early season on a, on a good food source right here with a, with a little more cover and more relaxed deer, obviously. Well, I'll have more videos coming out here shortly. Um, definitely looking forward to the rest of the spring. Hopefully it's a good one for you guys too. And uh, thank you guys for watching.